Tip FM's health feature is brought to you by Anne Darcy Nutritionist, Golden County Tipperary, 87 And Anne Darcy is with me in studio right now. How are you, Anne? I'm very good, and how are you? Ah, sure, I'm all right. Because, uh, you know, after I spoke to you last day, I discovered maybe I'm not as right as I should be. <laughs> Tell us about the whole digestive system and all of that. How does all of that work? How does it work? You know, we choose the food we eat. Mm. We choose it. And it, we swallow it into our stomach and our stomach has to break it down into little bits. It's a bit like a bucket of Lego. Yeah. And those, break, those foods that we have to break down become the raw material for our body. So our stomach has to digest it. Our gut has to absorb it. The liver sends it off and it says, okay, some of it goes off to the brain to make the brain chemicals. If they're all working well, we have a happy mood, calm mood. We sleep well. Uh, we're not anxious and we can remember things. We can learn and we can then remember so the brain needs to be working right. Right. The liver sends off the food and might go off to the hormones. It'll make your thyroid hormone. And your, th- your, your thyroid, if it's working right, burns off the food you eat. So if it's working well and it's working at its best, you eat food, you burn it off, you don't put on extra weight, um, and you have vitality and energy. But the, the thyroid hormone has to be made. Mm. But we need raw material. So the raw material is food that we eat. Right. But we still have to digest it. So if, if the food goes into our stomach and it doesn't digest well signs of bloating, burping, wind, because the food is fermenting in your belly. So it should digest. If it doesn't digest, it ferments. So now you have fermenting food. It's a bit like Guinness's brewery inside and it's fermenting and bubbling and gurgling. And some people are burping and belching it and Mm. some people are getting reflux and heartburn. But it's really telling you you're not digesting your food. If you were digesting your food, you wouldn't get those symptoms. Right. And now you send undigested food into the gut and it should have been broken down and digested but of course it's not properly done so now it can trigger allergy reactions so some people build up this overproduction of mucus uh, you get the <coughs> phlegmy throat yeah uh, you might have thickened mucus up your nose or in your ears, blocking the ears, glue ear. Um, some people get chesty, uh, you know, and they they have all this mucusy, phlegmy kind of stuff. But that's really telling you you didn't digest the food properly. So bloating and burping and wind is one one side effect mm-hmm. and one sign. You know, they're all symptoms, not diseases. They're symptoms. Yeah. Um, and then poorly digested food triggering allergies is another factor. So it can trigger mucus and it can trigger allergies. So you have people who get high histamine reactions. Um, You know, you see people itching their nose, uh, runny eyes and um, or people who are getting itchy skin, you know, so they eat a food, react to the food, produce histamine, the allergy chemical that's flying around under your skin. Now you're getting itchy skin, so you're scratching. Mm. So, of course, that's a symptom. But of course, it's, you know, we're we're calling it you know, a dermatitis or we're calling it eczema, but it's, you know, it's It's all down to the food. It's all back to the food. So you have to identify what's the food. Maybe sometimes you might remove it for a bit. Sometimes Mm. you you work to get your digestion working better. So, you know, taking digestive enzymes, we have enzymes that break down the food. So if you decided to wash up your dishes after the breakfast this morning and you had no bottle of washing up liquid and you've egg stuck to the plate and, Mm. you know, you know that the water won't do it really. You know, you need the enzymes of the washing up liquid. And, And we make those similar to that. We make enzymes similar to that. So you can either eat certain fruits that help you uh, kiwi fruit have a lot of enzymes. Um, pineapple has enzymes, and pawpaw or papaya. We can you mm. know we can buy these fruits here now. Um, they help you because they have digestive enzymes. And is it oversimplification if I say to you that if we were eating the proper food in the first place, um, we wouldn't need any of this? You'd say you wouldn't need it if you were eating, but some people are still eating the traditional diet, the yes. basic diet, and some people are digesting it well. But for every enzyme that we make for to make our enzymes, we need nutrients. So Mm. zinc is a mineral, vitamin B6, they're very common minerals and and vitamins, but a lot of people are deficient. So if something happens, so if you look at your nails and you see any white spots on your fingernails, it's a sign that your zinc levels are low. Now, some people are not eating enough zinc. So zinc is in red meat, it's in liver pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds but when we get stressed some some of us drain out more of our zinc when we get stressed or if our if we're under stress our gut bacteria don't make or convert the b vitamins the way they should right. so we have signs of of b vitamin deficiencies you know people get mouth ulcers sure they say oh take the b vitamins but you know the stress has shut down your stomach your gut bacteria have changed you're not changing the b vitamins to make them active now they're not working as they should. So now you have a deficiency of B vitamins. Uh, without B6, for example, you're not going to make your digestive enzymes. 
to make when I said the brain chemicals to make serotonin in your brain the happy mood mm. positive um, uplifting chemical serotonin it's made from tryptophan I mean that's a protein a little protein you, you have it in milk and cheese and you know it's just a protein but without enough zinc B6 magnesium iron folic acid vit, you know vitamin B12 mm. um, you know com- magnesium these common minerals and vitamins they call them the cofactors. So yes. you have to have enough of those vitamins and minerals to turn tryptophan into serotonin. All right, and so it's holistic. It's it's, it's everything it's, working it's together. It's trying to bring it all together. Yeah. It's, I suppose it's, what it's saying, here's the symptoms, and what do those mean? What mm. what if, So if, if somebody comes in to me, I, I, I kind of go through, you know, what are you eating? What is it working for you? Mm. What symptoms have you? And a lot of them are from a nutritional deficiency. Yes. Now, we have things, we'd also say nutritional deficiency, environmental toxicity. So what you were saying was right. Should we be, if we're eating the right foods, Mm. would we have these symptoms? We're in a toxic world. uh, Whether we like it or not. Whether we like it or not. We have to learn how to live and adapt. But it's only in the last maybe 100 years that we've been dealing with this level of toxicity. And for how many millions of years have we survived before that yes. without all these diseases and I suppose if you really looked back even over the last 50 years and then even if you look back over like if you look at school pictures when you were a kid you know slim kids loads of energy out running the fields Very climbing trees so, yeah. and then you saw changes in maybe the 70s not really the pictures are still the same mm. in the 70s weren't they the photographs and then in the 80s and we started getting more I suppose easy access to more overly produced food and fast things, food fast and, food yeah we probably lost a lot of the high fiber food that we were eating. Uh, you might be eating a lot more out of cans and, you know, anything that was canned had either extra salt or extra sugar. Mm. There's preservatives that have been added. And I suppose that there's that kind of a, an eating. You know, if you still got up and had a bowl of porridge, well, that's what your mother, your grandfather yeah. and the whole lot were eating back along. So, you know, that was still real. Um, but now, then you got all the breakfast cereals and out of the boxes. And, of course, and when yeah. you look at them, a lot of high sugar. And so if we keep giving too much sugar to a person you know, their body is working harder to break that down. You know, the more sugar you have, the more vitamin C you lose. Yeah. Vitamin C is for your immune system. Your immune system isn't working well. Possibly you're getting illnesses from lack of vitamin C. You know, if you brush your teeth and you spit blood into the sink, mm. and a lot of people have that. Sure, and, yeah. You know, you don't have scurvy, but you have weak blood vessels in your gums. And what, what, so what is that? C, what is that? C. Vitamin C. And we're deficient. A lot of us, are bruising, you know, when you've easily bruised mm. skin. So if you see somebody with little black marks and, you know, you think, God, you think I was hitting up. No, they, they just might hit the t- side of the table and bruise. Right. Vitamin C levels are low. So we're not eating enough of the fruit and the berries. Um, and we don't have and, much sunshine, I suppose, which doesn't help. We does don't it? have much sunshine. Sunshine is very big for vitamin D. Mm. You know, I was away last week now, and I was the, I was a person really trying to get out as much as yeah. I could to get into the sun. Um, and you know, hopefully, we'll have a good summer. Yeah. And you know, anytime you see, I remember my sister said last year. You know, she said, you know, you think now we're mad when we get a good day in April that we're gone to the beach, or May we're gone to the beach in early May because we got a good day. She said it might be all we get. Yeah, you don't realise it could so be all we to, get. Yeah, 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 I see. And how important is that, by the way, the, the, very, what we get from the sunshine? Very, very important. Okay. You, if, you, if you never ate food with vitamin D, providing you're getting sun, your skin will make vitamin D. Yes. And that's the way we're built. But if we don't, you know, say milk, vitamin A and vitamin D, we get them in milk. Yeah. And we get them for a lot of other foods. But, you know, it's to, it's to, to get the sun would be more important. Because today is our first day, we're going to sort of do a general thing. And yeah. after today, we might just break it down into different chunks of this and that. I, I, I'm thinking as well, particularly the Irish diet, we're all very fond of tea. We drink tea all day, day in, yeah. day out, even more so than coffee, I think, even still. What about that? Is that... Do you know, I, I think the tea, a lot of it depends now. If you're drinking tea... You can manage a cup of tea, and you mm. can manage. It has caffeine. Yeah. Some people are using it for the stimulant of the caffeine. If you make a pot of tea, you could have three mugs in that sitting. If you had two spoons of sugar with every cup of tea that you had, then three mugs of tea is after six giving you six spoons of, sugar. spoons of sugar. And so, you know, it's the added sugar to it is causing you more problems than the tea. Green tea. A lot of people are on green tea. You don't put sugar or milk into mm. green tea. Mm. A lot of people have moved on to the herbal teas. Yeah. You know peppermint tea and chamomile tea can calm your gut if you had a, a spasmy kind of a gut. So there's, there's, there's 
benefits to having it, you know, if you have a cup of tea, they know L-theanine is, a con- is what's in the tea. It has a calming effect in your brain. Yes. So when you say, why would you have the cup of tea? Is it, it would, well, people say, oh, I'll relax yeah, with the cup of tea. You're associated with relaxation, yeah. It's not, you're not using it to hype you up. But if you thought that you were going to be tired here and you had a late night and you had three hours sleep and you thought, I have to get through work, you might go for the coffee as a stimulant. Yes. So people will often use the tea to calm their head and they're going to use the coffee as a way to, right. you know, to spring them back well, up. Well, essentially it's what we're pouring into it that often. is the main, is. the main problem. Really? It's the, if you're putting sugar in it. Right. And an awful, a lot of people have gone away from the sugar. And, you know, I'm not a fan of the sweeteners. Mm. Um, you know, your, your body's not used to these sweeteners. A lot of them are artificial. Yeah. Aspartame is one of the, the, the chemicals that they've been using in the sweeteners. Um, toxic to the brain. You know, you have two neurotoxic chemicals that we make. Wow. Aspartate is one and glutamate is the other. So we know that people can go a bit high on, on the monosodium glutamate. Yeah, and yeah. you've heard about, you know, children with ADHD um, and when they have the MSG that they can go They go, go really wild. high brain stuff, yeah. So it's a bit like we're giving you speed and we're expecting you to go and sit in school and, and you have to look at the ingredients of so many things. Yeah. You're trying to concentrate, but we're giving you something that that stimulates your brain. Right. So, if you, if you when, when we were talking before, it, it, I was talking to you about yeah. sweet stuff. I, I just love sweet things. I mean, I would would give up meals for them and stuff. Yeah. You were saying that the possibility of that is that you're feeding something inside. There's often that, a candida. If you're craving yeah. Them, there's yeah. often a candida overgrowth in your system. So you know when you send uh, grain off to the breweries and they they brew a beer and it's a fermented yeasty yes. kind of a beer. Our diet has become so high in sugar that we are really feeding and overgrowing or overstimulating this overgrowth of candida. And it's become more widely known probably in the last maybe 30 years that people are overgrowing candida. Now, there's a lot of drugs that we have used to treat, say, infections. We have antibiotics. They're in in the last maybe 40, 45 years. They've become more common. Mm. 40 years, maybe. Yeah. So the antibiotics, people on the pill and people on steroids. Now, I'm not saying not to take those sure, when, you, sure. when you need them yeah. and when they're necessary. But if you keep eating a food that gives you a lot of mucus and that mucus gets infected, so you keep getting chest infections because the more dairy you drink, maybe you're intolerant, you're making mucus, it's, you're getting chesty, it gets infected, you need another antibiotic. So right. it's 30 years since I had an antibiotic. Do you know? So I'm nearly on a mission now at this point. Right. Now, when you need them, take them. But if you keep having to take them because you keep drinking milk and you keep getting mucusy and those mucus congested areas are getting infected. That's you're, so you're, logical when you speak then, about it like but, that. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. But what you're on is kind of this, you can't get off this thing of, I have to stop eating this food. Well, you ha- of course you can get off the treadmill right. of it, can't you? Because well, you're making I would a decision. Have never, I would have never associated a constant, because I know people who keep, keep, seem to keep getting this chest infections. Flemmy, flemmy chesty. Yeah. And I would have never associated with the, the, the genesis of it being um, dairy product. In some uh, way. If, if dairy is your intolerance. Is, is the intolerance. Now, other yeah. people are intolerant to eggs, other people are intolerant to wheat, and different people are intolerant to different things. And often it can run in families that you'll see somebody is intolerant to dairy, and then on from that... Their right. children have a similar, or you know, it, 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 it's so amazing. Genetic genetics. Way, yeah. There's a lot of genetics. There's a lot of genetics attached to the hay fever. You know, when you see people with hay fever, and you, yes. and you, you know, I often sound like the Unbelievables and Pat Short, and you know, when I'm when I'm talking about those sketches that they've done, and, and it ran in the family, but sure, they were happy. Do you remember that? <laughs> they had a really good sketch <laughs> on it. <laughs> but you know, there are things that run down the family, mm. and um, there's a a detox pathway we have without getting technical on it called the methylation or methylation pathway. And some people don't do that well. There's a little glitch in the genetics. And if you don't do that pathway and you don't detoxify your body properly, you can't get rid of histamine. So you're a person who accumulates high histamine. Right. So when you see somebody rubbing the eyes and rubbing the nose, they've got that itchy nose, then they develop an asthma tendency at one point or they have eczema at another point. There is a glitch in the genetics that is allowing for that Right, and what, hay fever pattern. And what do you do about that? Except take antihistamine, or, or well, you're only taking antihistamine once you've got the histamine, isn't it? Really, you yes, kind of have to get the effect before you. You have to get yeah. the attack almost before you start treating the attack. Right, right. But from a prevention point of view, it's to do with how your body changes folic acid. So there's B vitamins that you can take to keep this this methylation pathway working at its best. So B vitamins, and yet you think B vitamins are such a simple, you know, oh, isn't you know, it's almost like B vitamins are not important. Yeah, yeah, they're like the Smarties, of, like the of, the, Smarties. of the meds, yeah. You know, because there's so many other things other than the B vitamins. Yeah. But they help you to detoxify your body. Um, they help you to make energy in your muscles and your heart and everywhere. Like every part of your body needs sure. to make energy. Without the B vitamins, you can't make energy. So they have such an important um, role 
And yet we make those B vitamins in our gut. You know, we eat the food with the B vitamins, whole grains. Mm. Now, if you're eating everything that has all the white flour products, then you've yes. stripped all the grain, the outer grain where the B vitamins are, are you this know, are, are, are found. So now you're, you're eating food that has been stripped of the B vitamins. So unless you put back in the B vitamins. So if you, mouth ulcers is one of the signs that you're low. Of that, yeah. It says here, I'm 65. Could I... Uh, put a scoop of protein powder to my porridge. I don't do much dairy, but I feel I need more protein. Well, yeah, you can. And there's a lot of different protein powders out there. I know there's the fermented rice protein powder that people find easy to digest. Uh, there's soy protein, whey protein. And now whey protein, of course, is dairy. But the whey, the people that I find that are intolerant to dairy are intolerant to the casein that becomes the cheese. Remember Little Miss Muffet and the Tuffet, the sure. curds and the whey? Yeah. The curds became the cheese. It's the casein protein. The whey was was high protein and they found really good strong immunoglobulins that protected your immune system so the earlier you know the dairy that we were getting mm. um in years gone by didn't affect us the same way as the dairy we do now and um when they started pasteurizing the the milk and brought the temperatures up over 76 degrees now we're at one one minute at 100 degrees for yes. our pasteurization of our milk in this country, all through the European Union. But years ago, it was at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. They unraveled this immunoglobulin protein with the pasteurization. So where we had milk, people say, but we had, had milk for years without having a problem with the milk for years. Yeah. The higher temperature of pasteurization has been found to unravel the protein that is the immunoglobulin. I know this sounds wicked technical, I'm sorry. No, but no, 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 I'm But following. you're following all this. Yeah. The immunoglobulin unraveled with the higher heat temperatures of pasteurization. So where we had protection and good benefits from the milk and we the no whey, longer have that, we though. no longer have. So this where we incredible. react, we're reacting in more modern times due to modern technology. Do you get incensed about all this every so often? I do. That, there's so much stuff going on in the background that we're not aware about. We're so not we aware. See, I, I see a lot of kids and I see a lot of, not to be talking bowels at lunchtime now, I apologise, but I see a lot of kids that get constipated mm. and the research is showing that the gluten and the casein, gluten is in your wheat and your rye, barley, oats and the casein is the protein in the milk. And we yes. talked about this the last time we were here yeah, as well. I remember, yeah. And the, the casein and the, the gluten should break down but if your gut has become irritated and you don't make the enzyme to break it down, the research is showing, and this is testable, you know, the labs are testing this around the world. Sure. Your gluten and your casein turns into morphine. Glutamorphine, caseomorphine. So you are making an opiate, a, like a drug. In your body. In your body from the bread and the milk. So from the wheat and the, the dairy. So if you're looking for a cheese sandwich, if you're looking for um, a wheat cereal with milk, you see, those foods in the people who are affected by it, it's not in everybody. Yes. So you end up getting a gut that has been slowed down. So I was nursing for years. Yeah. We know if we give morphine, we have to give something to help the gut to move because it gets constipated. So we're seeing so many people with this constipated bowel, you know, wide, can't move, can't, you know, whatever. Kids screaming in pain at us on yeah. laxatives, you know, just because they're eating the bread and the milk. Now, of course, if it's an opiate, you want... You, you want you, you crave want it. it. You crave it, You yeah. crave it. So you crave it like a drug. Um, when it drops out of your system at night, can you imagine your blood levels dropping at night? You often wake up with nightmares and night terrors and, you know, fears because you're getting these bad dreams because you had morphine topped up all day, whether it was the milk or the wheat or wherever it was all day. So you're with, withdrawing from it. You withdraw from it. The same as a person that can hallucinate withdrawing from the drugs, you can do the same at night when you're withdrawing from it. So you see a lot of children that get the nightmares and the night terrors, sweating, you know, the back of the head sure, sweating. Yeah. You know, the pyjamas wet. It's not just incredible altogether. It's a fascinating I, field. I mean, I'm, I'm delighted we have this lot because people should be more aware of, uh, yeah. of, of all of this, you know. And, uh, my, my role, I often think my role is to teach it, yeah. is, is to let people know because I'm happy to just, this information is out there. It's researched. Like there's right. nothing that I've this said. This isn't this, very, very new agey It's not new age. Stuff. Right. Very, okay. very technical and it's very scientifically based. So, hmm. You know, it's scientifically based. You know, the, the information is out there. Okay. And, you know, so we have kind of a health industry that's looking at disease, a disease industry, I suppose. So when you have the disease, let's treat you. But, you know, it's more about can we prevent the illnesses coming? Would you rather prevent heart disease and diabetes right. and 
Alzheimer's, would you rather have your brain until the day you go in a box? Mm. It is my mind set. You right. know? So if we uh, can work towards prevention... Well, there, there's something we might deal with on, on a, a bigger scale on one of the days. But what about Alzheimer's? It seems to me that we're hearing about it now all of the time for the last... 30 years maybe. Yeah, and even and it's getting younger and younger. What, what is that? You know, there's oxidative stress to the brain. Oxidative stress is that we have, we make free radicals. Uh, we need antioxidants to counteract it. But we're damaging areas in the brain. And we know that the, the where the memory is stored, it's shrinking. The areas are shrinking. So if you've wiped away that area, I, I, I almost consider it a bit like melting an ice cube and you've stored your memory and we've melted the outer layer and the outer layer. And, and as we lose our memory, we've lost the most recent memory and now we're going backwards and now you're back remembering what it was like when you were 20 but the 60 years in between have disappeared. It's the saddest disorder um, that you will come across because you have people who do not remember their families. That's terrible. It's It's heartbreaking. But if we don't stop it you know um, homocysteine, when I talked about that methylation pathway, again we all have this and it should be working. The high histamine people often have it under functioning so it's one of the signs. So the Mm. high histamine allergy type people often have it working less efficiently than other people. But they did a study and they found that they said it didn't matter if the homocysteine levels came down. So homocysteine is a marker of inflammation and some people have it raised, especially the people with heart disease. Yes. We know there's a high risk between Alzheimer's and heart disease. What they found was if you lowered the homocysteine level, vitamin B6 can lower the homocysteine level and vitamin B12. We're back to the B vitamins yes. again that if you lowered it, it didn't make a difference. It wouldn't change severe Alzheimer's or moderate Alzheimer's, but it prevented mild Alzheimer's becoming worse. Okay. But the research came out and when they, when they you know, stated the facts of it, they said it didn't change Alzheimer's. If you can, now, back to common sense. If you can stop somebody with mild Alzheimer's developing to moderate and severe Alzheimer's, at some point do we no longer have moderate and severe people with Alzheimer's? Right. Again, it's logical, isn't it? You know? Vitamin B6 and vitamin B12. It's amazing. Should everybody just be taking extra B, B6 I think it's. B12? I think it's of benefit. I think. Of I benefit. think. I really believe in this day and age with the foods we're eating and we're not eating enough of the B vitamins, we have disturbed our gut with antibiotics, steroids, the pill. Right. That if the gut bacteria is not working at its best, we're not providing the B vitamins. Okay. The, the detoxification pathways are not working. We're full of oxidative stress. And then the brain is getting damaged. Okay. Um, uh, my... My son is 29, has uh, Intev bowel. Do you, does, does, uh, no, irritable? Ir- irritable, it says here, but I presume yeah, it's ir- irritable. irritable bowel. Yeah, and, and again, the amount of times I hear that. Irritable bowel. Yeah. Irritable bowel, your stomach isn't maybe digesting the food and you're sending undigested food in. You're either getting cramps or he's got alternating constipation and diarrhea. Mm. If he's got a lot of the constipation, I would be thinking about the gluten and the dairy turning into morphines. A very wide distended bowel movement, you know, that you right. think, how is this going to fit out? That's yeah. often one of the signs of the bread and the milk, the gluten and the casein. We're just about out of time, which is pretty because a lot, of, a lot of people now bringing in questions, but you will be back with us in two weeks' time, won't you? I'll be back in a month's time. In a month's time, is it? Yeah, in a month's Marie Osborne time, will okay. be here in in two weeks time two and we do have time. the expo so if anybody's interested we're on the 5th tell, of tell May tell us about the expo the what expo's on in the Park Hotel here in Clonmel on the 5th of May we had a lot of people here we did it last year as well we did it again in October right. we will be, uh, there'll be a yoga class there'll be exercise class there'll be somebody doing kinesiology um, the Osbournes are here doing the chiropractic they're doing the, the scans of the back so that yes. you walk away with the scan I'm going to be talking to people on our table we're all doing lectures through the day. Pat mm-hmm. from the Honey Pot is there. Uh, Richard is doing, um, you know, like sure. a, a exercise class. Um, Nicole Fahey is here, I know, doing kinesiology. Mm. Sinead Delaney is here doing Zest for Life. There's quite a few people doing talks. Um, I'm specifically going to work with inflammation. And how do you make soups that keep you in an anti-inflammatory state? Okay. How do you, the juices, making some kefir as a probiotic for the gut. All so right. anyway, it's on, on the 5th of May on the Sunday. Starts at 11, goes till about 5.30. Finishes with Maggie Cross doing laughter yoga at, at 5 to 5.30. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And she's fantastic at it, actually. She so. certainly is. Uh, that, uh, uh, we're, we're just about out of time, which is pretty because, as I say, a lot of people want to get involved. Now, people wanting to contact you. Where are you working on a daily basis? So I'm in Golden. Basis? You're in Golden, in Golden on a daily basis. Yeah. All right, okay. And we will have your number up on the website as well. All right, lo- lovely to meet you, Anne. And uh, Thank you thanks very, very much. much indeed. That was most interesting altogether. And we'll be talking to Anne in a month's time again. Tip FM's health feature is brought to you by Anne Darcy Nutritionist, Golden County Tipperary, 087 775 9385.